Hola, my friends! Welcome back to A Life I Choose, the place to be to design your life so you can thrive. For those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Emma. I'm a psychotherapist, a lifestyle strategist, and I'm also the founder of the self development agency, A Life I Choose. Today, I have a video for you about how self care is different from self indulgence. And the reason that I want to make this for you is because the people who watch A Life I Choose are high achievers. They are people who have high standards, set high goals, have high expectations of themselves, and they also care immensely for the projects that they're doing and they care immensely for the people around them. And very often they tend to take on a lot of responsibility and a lot of uh, things to do as well. What happens when, you know, you can, you can have that way of being, it's good that you have high standards and that you, that you have high goals and that you want a lot for your life and you want to contribute a lot. The only thing is that when you're not also filling up your tank first, when you're not taking care of yourself, you end up feeling burnt out, depleted, exhausted, frustrated, and you'll find that you have less patience for other people. You know what I'm talking about. This happens because when we're not taking care of ourselves, when we're not meeting our basic needs or even our higher needs, we end up going into survival mode. And from survival mode, we don't make good decisions. What's happening when you're in survival mode is that your fight or flight system in your brain is so overactive that your prefrontal cortex switches off. It doesn't function as well. So what happens is, your prefrontal cortex is responsible for forward thinking, for good decision making in alignment with your values and your goals, and it's also responsible for compassion. So when that's switched off and you are in fight or flight, you are thinking about survival, so you're thinking more about me, right? You're thinking about how am I going to meet my needs as like fast as possible and uh, 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 oh my god. And so it means that you end up making terrible decisions for your business, bad decisions for your relationships and bad decisions for yourself. So in this video, I'm going to speak about what is self-care, what is self-indulgence, give you examples of both so that you can feel safe to take care of yourself, to do what you need to take care of yourself so that you can nourish and you can be in the best energetic state possible to give all you want to give to your projects, to your relationships, to your self-growth, and you can really, from that space of good energy, contribute to the world around you. Doesn't that sound good? If it does, then keep on watching. So, what is self-care? You can think of self-care as being in relationship with yourself, okay? So self-care is about becoming curious and compassionate, about you, who you are, what you need, what you need in this moment, how you're feeling, and how you can take action to meet those needs. Because self-care starts with self-awareness, but it is not self-awareness. Self-awareness isn't enough. You can have loads of awareness about yourself and your life and your state, but if you take no action to make the changes that you want, then you are aware, but you remain stagnant. So what's important is that you tune into what you need, you understand what you need, and you take action to be able to rebalance and self-regulate. So you can think about self-care a bit like the relationship between a parent and a baby. So whenever a baby goes off balance, so they become hang uh, hangry, <laughs> yeah, hangry, they become hungry, or they become cold, or they just need love, okay, the baby is going to cry out. And the job of the parent, the responsibility of the parent is to tune in with their child, not from their heads of what the child should need right now because of the time, or whatever, although sometimes that's a part of it, but by tuning in energetically and with their hearts and saying, okay, what's happening with my baby? Like, how is my baby out of tune? What does my baby need? And then, you know, the, the parent has this intuitive sense and the parent goes, 
okay, I think my baby needs food or I think my baby needs love right now. Oh, my baby, they need love. They, they haven't been cuddled for a while, my baby. Okay, so the parent gives the baby what they need and then the baby receiving what they need feels safe again. They step out of fight or flight. They go back into feeling safe and they relax, they rebalance, they re-nourish. When we rebalance and we re-nourish, we step into a state where our bodies can heal where our bodies can function well. And so we feel safe, we feel supported, we feel healthy, our energy can flow, our energy can move. It's the most nourishing and beautiful thing. And when you think about kids, you know, kids when they feel safe, when they know that the parent responds to them, the parent is there for them, you know, they feel safe and from that safety they can risk, they can go and explore their worlds, they can go and talk to other kids, they can talk to other adults because they know that their parents have their back. When the parent doesn't respond to them or is inconsistent with responding to them, the child lacks safety because they don't know if their needs are going to be met. And so what happens is the child doesn't feel so safe to go out into the world and to explore. Okay, so they end up stagnating themselves. They stay, you know, full of fear and they stay closed to the world. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of upbringing you have had because your responsibility as an adult now, you know, you might have had an inconsistent uh, parent or a parent who responded to you loving one, one time and, and like you were the worst thing that ever happened to them the next, you know, and, and obviously this co caused conflict within you and you might need to heal from that, but you're not stuck, you're not trapped. Like you seek guidance and you begin practicing being that nourishing parent to yourself. As adults, this is our responsibility. We are now our own parents. We tune into ourselves and we're going, oh, I'm off balance, like I'm frustrated, I'm hungry, I'm exhausted, I'm snapping at my kids, I'm snapping at my partner, like I cannot stay in this meeting because this person's driving me crazy, like something's up, like, okay, let me tune in, let me see what's happening. <sighs> I'm off balance something isn't working, this uh, relationship maybe isn't working for me or uh, you know I haven't taken a break in a really long time or you know my energy has been so out there and I have so little return I need to find a way to make this return you know whatever you tune in you listen you meet the need and sometimes it is a small need it's like I need rest or I need mm, food and sometimes it's a larger need, like I need to, um, you know, I need to redesign my business model to make this work or I need to, you know, really explore whether this uh, relationship that I'm in, you know, is going to grow or not and whether this is nourishing me or, you know, it, it, it varies. But it's really about listening to when you go off balance, noticing what you need. And not staying at awareness, but taking action bit by bit to meet that need so you can rebalance, you can find safety because you are taking care of yourself. You are that parent for yourself who always has your back, okay? So you balance and from that space of safety, you can venture out into the world and you can grow. Does that make sense? If it does, say yes, baby, and give me a thumbs up. So you can think of self-care as nourishment, right? We nourish things to help them grow. We water plants and we give them sunlight so they can grow. And we need to nourish ourselves too so that we can grow, right? If you want your career to expand, you need to nourish yourself first. You want to have good relationships with the people around you, you need to nourish yourself first. So think of self-care as nourishment. And if you'd like to delve into this further, take a piece of paper right now and draw a line down the middle of it. And on one side write nourishing and on the other side write depleting. And on the side where it says nourishing, I would like for you to write as many things that you can think of that you find nourishing, that nourish your energy. So things like having a morning routine where you do a little bit of meditation and a little bit of yoga, for example, that gets you into a good state for the rest of the day. Or something like 
authentically communicating your needs to your partner in a way that they can hear you, you know, when you have that heartfelt communication with your partner and you really understand each other and it brings that safety and then the, the sex spark comes alive again, that's nourishment, right? Or something else, something that you find nourishing might be, you know, doing my accounts so that I can know exactly where I am with my money and then I feel safe to make financial decisions. That's another thing that could be nourishing. Then there could be other things that are nourishing like massage or, um, you know, uh, playing tennis or meeting friends who, you know, you can really connect with uh, or who, who you can have fun with, whatever. Just list down whatever comes to you that you find nourishing. And on the other side, you can write down things that are depleting, that deplete your energy, okay? That take away your energy, like arguments or aggressive communication or staying in bed too long even though you're not tired or working around the clock and not taking any time for yourself, you know? Just list as many things that come to you. So you do that exercise and you have more of a sense of what is nourishing and what is depleting. Now, let's move on to self-indulgence. What is self-indulgence? Self-indulgence is when you take certain self-care practices too far to the point that you end up actually depleting yourself instead of nourishing yourself. So I'm going to give you some examples. So let's say you find meditation really nourishing, right? That's a self-care practice or it's something that you've associated with a self-care practice. For some people, it's not nourishing. So let's say that, okay? And you decide that you need self-care today and so you are gonna meditate for as long as you need and in doing so, you end up missing your morning meeting with your colleagues. You haven't informed any of them that you're not, you're not gonna turn up and because of that, you end up, you know, damaging the relationships there and in essence, it depletes you. Another example is, you understand that authentic communication is absolutely necessary for relationships to grow, okay? You are frustrated with your partner and you decide you're going to be authentic, you're going to be honest and you're just going to let it rip, okay? You're just going to like unleash the demons within kind of thing and you're going to just, you know, criticize and belittle and just boom. Now, okay, might have felt um, cathartic in the process, but in the long run, it's doing damage to your relationship, right? There's a difference between authentic, nourishing communication and authentic, depleting communication. So there you go. Another example is, let's say, you know, you are really loving these self-care practices, you love going for massage, you love going to the gym, you love doing self-development courses online, but you haven't factored them into your, you know, accounts. You haven't checked your accounts to make sure that you can actually afford this stuff. And so you're spending beyond your means. And because you're spending beyond your means on self-care, you end up then depleting yourself because you're putting yourself into a state of fight or flight around your finances. So you don't feel safe. And then it ends up depleting you further. If I am making sense to you, then please give me a thumbs up and say, hell yeah! So to summarize, self-care is tuning in, noticing what you need, taking action to meet what you need, so that it nourishes you. From that space, you create safety, which gives you the ability to grow, and from growth, you contribute to the people around you, and you contribute high quality, baby. Not low quality, high quality, okay? Self-indulgence, on the other hand, is when you actually end up depleting your energy, which puts you into a state of unsafety, which causes stagnation and an inability to contribute and therefore more self-centeredness, more selfishness. I want to end this video by telling you, do not wait for anyone to give you permission to take care of yourself. And the reason that I tell you this is because we are all so concerned with our own lives that it's very unlikely that anyone is gonna tune in to you and go, hey, you need a break, like go take care of yourself. Or, hey, like you need to pay your taxes, you better get on that, you know? Very few people are gonna do this for you. And the people who do, either because they're sensitive and they tune in and they can feel you, or because they care about you so much that they 
take care of you, it's not their responsibility to take care of you. It is our responsibility to take care of ourselves only, period. So whether it's, you know, being able to self-regulate better, being able to step out of anxiety more, improving your relationships, improving your finances, creating a career that you love, seek guidance with it. If you do not know how to do this, there is no shame in saying, hey, I've never done this before. I want to learn. I'm going to go to someone who's done this already, who knows how to do this so that they can teach me. I'm going to invest in myself in this way. So seek guidance. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comment section below. Before I go, I want to let you know that Nicola and I, Nicola, if you haven't met her already, she edits all my videos. We are going to be focusing on a kick-ass project for you in August and we're dedicating all our energy to that during the month of August. So in August, we will not be putting up YouTube videos. We are taking a break. If you miss us, you can totally go back to our older videos, see if there's anything that you missed and you want to catch up on. We cannot wait to see you back here in September so that we can kick off and rock and roll and you know create an awesome end to the year. Can't wait to see you. Take care. I wish you a super nourishing August. Lots and lots of love. Peace.